All right, let's take a look at some Scantle data and try to figure this out. So you can see he has 290,000 miles on here. So this is, if this is the first engine uh, he's put in it, not too bad, huh? Uh, so let's go ahead and check the codes on here. So we have codes for uh, the knock sensor on circuit one. These are continuous memory DTCs, so they may not be current. And then of course, 345 and 349, which are basically intermittent uh, connection for a cam sensor signal on bank two. So that can be the trigger wheel in there, it can be the phaser coming apart, or it can be the actual, um, uh, the harness on there, the connector. So we're gonna check that out. First though, let's take a look at some live data on here. So very simple, we're gonna bring up the knock sensor values, and then we're gonna bring up the VCT error on here and see what's going on. So uh, it may not track on here until we clear the codes. It's another thing to remember. If you have uh, timing error codes, it may not track on here until you clear them. Yeah, so sure enough, uh, we got connection here. Make sure you got connection, Let's pick anything and resync with it. All right, there we go. So we're getting a knock sensor reading on there. It's not totally dead. It's not the same as bank two. Uh, but we're getting a reading on there for sure. Now the VCTs, I mean, there's no reading at all. If they're not stuck at zero, no problem, no error. They're not reading. It's not displaying data. So we're going to go in and clear codes quick. And then it should start showing us live data on there. That's the one thing you got to realize about certain things like this. You need to make sure you're getting live data that's not being affected by current code. So usually once you, you know, record the codes that you have, you clear them, and then you go from there, see if they'll repeat, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's what we're doing here. It's a good practice to keep in mind. So we're gonna clear them, and then we're gonna uh, check those same codes on there for the VCT error. I think the only reason you really came in was for the VCT error on the 345 and 349 codes. All right, so let's make sure it syncs back up on here. We're getting live data, all right. Now let's go ahead and start it up and see what we're getting for readings on here. So our knocks look good. We're still not getting anything on these two, which is a real concern. So we're gonna have to go ahead and look at uh, bank two first and see what's going on here. For the heck of it, let's see if it's even gonna let me look at a power balance on here. No, 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 not compression, not compression. It probably won't because there's a sink error. Yeah, so let's go ahead and look at the connector. That's the very first thing you want to do, especially with a new engine like this. All right, so let's take a look at it. This guy did a number on this engine when he installed it. I mean, this is incredible, actually. Uh, so he went through and he did a lot of extra uh, to make sure it was done right. And I understand his frustration when he has timing error codes afterwards. I mean, look at all this extra stuff and blue and, oh man, really nice. He did some work to the frame, went ahead and changed out, you know, power steering lines and all that stuff while he's in here, pulleys, he didn't really work on this thing. So let's take a look though. So the cam sensors are right here in the front. This one's really taped up with convolute on it for some reason. Uh, whereas usually they look a little more like this, just some tape on the wires. Uh, so again, this is bank two over here on the driver's side, so we're gonna go after this one first. I'll prop it up on the side here. We're gonna open up that harness on there. Um, so, you know, one of the first things you wanna do, of course, is make sure it's connected. We're connected. Is the connector, the locking tap broken? No, we're good there. And then you wanna look at the terminals on here. Look good to go seals on there all that good stuff and then you want to start looking at the back side here uh, because this is where a lot of times uh, you know rats chew on stuff uh, they get broken because they're bending right here and uh, so a lot of times where they probe when they do diagnostics too and you can really see you know there's something going on right there see the one hole right there doesn't mean it's broken but see they're probing right there see a little hole right there on the red wire Yes, yeah, so we're going to check that out. Once you get 
you know, they probe them with those little pins and then they sit here and everything gets thrown at and thrown into it when you're going on the road, rain and everything else, mist, you know, salt, all that stuff. So it'll corrode pretty quick. Copper does not last uh, in the atmosphere. So I mean, even air will oxidize it. So let's go ahead and open that harness up and let's check that out first before we get crazy here. All right, let's go ahead and cut this back. I just use a razor blade on here. And you know, you gotta put a certain amount of pressure on there to get through the tape and not through the convolute and the wires. Takes skill, but. Yeah, this is, this is a, uh, it's got that like coroplast on here, that coroplast tape and everything. Maybe there was problems with this before. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting down to regular convolute on here. So we're just gonna go back a little bit, like right there, you know, something like that. Let me tilt you guys down a bit more. There we go. What I'll do after that, I'll just get some of this excess out of here. You know, most wiring failures occur close to the connector. And I think that's gonna be true here too. So we'll pull off tape inside of here. Because if we do need a connector, we wanna go back a couple inches anyway, so splice it in. I think we need a connector, this thing feels flimsy. But we'll go back a couple. And here's the factory tape on here for sure. Maybe we do it at the end of the connector on there. These are kind of fused together. So what I'll do in a situation like this, we're like, oh, it looks pretty bad. And uh, hmm, I wonder is, I'll give it a little, bit, a little yank on here. If it's corroded, we're only gonna be held by the um, insulation. I think that's the case here, see it? So I'll bring you in closer so I can show you the reveal on here. This is a good way to inspect connectors before you start depinning them and cutting them. So on this side, uh, we have, we, we're not pinned. See right there, you see a little pinhole from the back probing. So on this side, you yank on it, feels solid. It's not stretching. It's obviously the copper inside of there. You go to this side right here, okay? We know it's a problem already, but it's a corrosion and broken wires. I don't know. Look at it. See how it's like a rubber? You see how it's like a rubber band? And then you pull a little bit more and it'll just break. But you didn't break it, it was already broken. You can't just pull copper like that. They're actually very strong. So this one was broken inside of there. Let me get a, uh, see if I can pull it back on here. Looks like we're hitting good copper already, maybe. Maybe not. Now we are, you saw all the dust. That's all the corrosion. See it coming out of there? Yeah, so we're already back to pre copper right here, you see it? We're pretty good right there. So we can go right here and, and start our splice. But yeah, that, that, was, that was the concern. Now why is the other side not reading? Well, it could be the same situation uh, because they were testing both sides, trying to diagnose a VCT, a VCT concern on this engine. Um, but we had codes for this side initially. So the, the software's funny. I mean, you may lose signal on this side so it just says forget it i'm not going to take signals from either side so and in, in, in display in this, in this scan tool so what we're going to do is we're going to simply uh, go ahead and repair this with a new pigtail and then we're going to go ahead and um, retest with the scan tool and i'm thinking unless they were in there digging on the other side i'm thinking we're going to get a signal back on the other side also uh, on the scan tool anyway but that's, that's how quickly I diagnosed it. I mean, we're doing this live together. Um, so, you know, I didn't go and start pinning and checking schematics and workshop manuals or, you know, checking resistance between the PCM and here. I did nothing. I went ahead and I checked it out to make sure it's not damaged because nine times out of 10, you're gonna find this. So keep that in mind when you're diagnosing just about anything. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and repair this and then we'll recheck on the scan tool and see what kind of signal we're getting on both sides at that point. All right, now with the connector, the pigtail on there fixed, let's go ahead and test it out. Like I said, the, the software is finicky, it's weird, and both sides may come back now that the one side is actually reading. So let's go ahead, bring it up on here. Oh, there it is. May have to go to the other side. So we're getting a good, good reading there. There we go. So there we go. See, it's 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 weird. Definitely weird. Like I said, some of the, the software has its own crazy little quirks about it, you know. So by fixing the one side, they both came back on the software side anyway, on the scan tool side. So, yeah. Like I said, the other side looked just fine. I'm sure he had problems with bank two, which is why he was diagnosing it, put the engine in. And like I said, the, you know, a knock number looks a little low on number one. I'm gonna go for a drive and see what the numbers actually read on there. That's the side that was set in the code. Uh, so I'm gonna do a, a cam reset on here and then uh, go for a drive and see what the actual knock sensor reading is. You know, and then of course monitor our cam position. But right now we're reading perfect. Look at that, both sides came back once I fixed uh, bank two on there. So, all right, let's go for a drive and see what goes on with the knock sensor next. Let's compare it to this 2011 Expedition 543 valve. So key and engine off, same numbers. Go ahead and start it up, let it idle, and right away they start coming down, but they're coming down evenly. So you may not know how many knocks that it should be sensing on there, what's normal, what's not. I mean, what's this number really mean besides the amount it's sensing? But the one thing you probably know is that both sides should be pretty darn close. So you can see, you know, they're pretty darn close on here, whereas the other vehicle, um, idling it was 60 to 80 on this side on the one with the code and it was you know like right around here 140 170 and then we drove down the road kind of cruising down the road um it would jump to a couple hundred like 250 on number two and it would drop down to like 24 and just kind of hold on one so you know all these numbers what they really mean that doesn't matter the one thing we know is that they should probably be pretty much the same both banks on there and this vehicle which has no knock sensor issues just confirmed that I mean look at that it's really close so even though we're connected on the other vehicle with the knock sensor I'm sure you didn't torque it down right or just the knock sensor inside is uh damaged itself it's pretty simple at that point because we're getting a reading it's just not a consistent good reading uh, on the other vehicle all right so I went ahead and looked at the knock sensor connection so uh, the knock sensor itself is down in the engine valley down here. Uh, it's kind of buried down in there. Anyway, I could see it down there. Uh, the one thing I did do to make sure it was kind of tightened down properly is you can see way back in here. Um, right here is the connection and it goes down. So I yanked on it a little bit to see if uh, the, the sensor down there moved at all and it didn't move. So they must have tightened it or torqued it down. Uh, the other thing I noticed on the connection, I know it's, let me get you in a little bit further. Um, I noticed with all his taping he did that he had this half, the knock sensor half and the harness side taped together, which was weird. I pulled the tape off of there, uh, the tape, and I looked at it and the locking tab on the connector wasn't broken. So I was like, why would he do that? Well. It kind of just came apart a little too easy. So I looked at the connections on there, looked at the wires, no one back probed anything. And generally the knock sensors in the Ford factory harness are okay. The problem a lot of people run into though, and the Fords with uh, higher mileage is they have all these like weather pack seals on them like that, right? This one's nice and new and plush and it has a little bit of lubricity to it. And it'll just slide right on there and it provides a super good seal. I mean, these. These connections, if you don't you know, molest them with uh, pin probes, like 
we saw over here on bank two. If you don't do that, I mean, the harness is actually really reliable and there's never corrosion inside of here because the weather pack seal keeps it all out. But they're really plush. Well, after a while they get dry, so it's hard to get the connections together on there. So I pulled apart and I said, no way. The tape was holding it together and those knock sensors, they produce what, like millivolts. So any kind of noise in the, the connection there would produce a number over on the scan tool side and the PCM what it sees. So I think we were just seeing like a stray voltage causing numbers because all a knock sensor does is it produces voltage, all it does. Um, so what I did is I put some electrical grease on there, which is the way I do it when they get a little stiff like that. Use the Motorcraft XG12. It's good for a connection on there, but it's also loops up that seal on there. And then I was able to click it in nice and tight. So I think we just fixed the concern. Like I said, I, I think, you know, all these connections on here are just uh, electrical connections that are not done right. So let's check it out. There we go, no way. So now it's doing the same thing as that expedition over there. They're mirroring each other. Look at that. 130, 140, 150, within 20, 20 knocks of each other, just like the other one. Wow, so this thing is good to go at this point. Look at that. So that was another simple fix on here, wow. It just goes to show, I mean, especially when someone else has been in here installing stuff, especially someone that's not used to installing stuff like this every day and they don't know the quirks of the systems. It's good to know when you're a specialist like this to know what all the quirks are at because you can pinpoint stuff like this pretty darn quick once you get in there and look at it and start investigating. These are two simple, quick, easy fixes and the customer is going to be super happy with this repair. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.